Exponentiation. This is the first topic under algebra that we will be discussing. So what is exponentiation? It is a mathematical operation written as such. So this can be um, verbalized as b raised to n or b raised to the n degree or b raised to the power of n. So yeah, there are different ways of saying this, but it basically means the same thing. And there are two numbers involved in this one, which is uh, b, the base, and then n, the exponent or the power. And what does this really mean? It just means that we're going to multiply b by itself n number of times. Now an example of this is 5 raised to 3 or 5 raised to the power of 3, or 5 raised to the third degree, or 5 cubed. Yeah, um, there are different ways of saying this, but they basically mean the same thing. It just means that we're going to multiply 5 by itself 3 times. So you have 5 times 5 times 5. There you go. Okay, next we will be discussing the loss of exponents. They are around 8 or 9 loss of exponents um, but this actually depends on uh, which books or reference you're using. What I'm actually using for this lecture is a book by Engineer Gilisanya titled Engineering Formula Series Mathematics and Engineering Sciences. In this book it has all the formulas that, uh, that you will need to know for the first subject of the CE licensure board exam which is your mathematics uh, surveying and engineering transportation mst or transportation engineering rather <laughs> okay so let's go back to our lecture so the first law that we have here is a raised to m multiplied by a raised to n and this should be equal to a raised to m plus n Provided that a is not equal to 0, of course. Because if a is equal to 0, and we raise that to whatever number, let's say 5, this will also be equal to 0. Diba? Okay, for number 2, the second law that we have here is a raised to m divided by a raised to n. And the value that you'd get from this expression depends whether if m is greater than n or m is equal than n is equal to n or m is less than n. So it depends. So say if m is greater than n, then you'd get a raised to m minus n. But if m is equal to n, then you'd just get 1. But if m is less than n, you would get 1 over a raised to n minus m. So it depends. Uh, later, we will cite some um, examples for this one so that you'll be able to understand it better. Okay. So for the third law, we have quantity a raised to m multiplied or raised to, this whole quantity would be raised to the power of n and this is just equal to a raised to m times n right it's quite simple and then the fourth law we have quantity a b c raised the whole thing raised to n and what we're going to be doing here is just we're just going to distribute the exponent so this whole thing should be equal to a raised to n times b raised to n times c raised to n. Okay, so the fifth law we have here, quantity, quantity, a divided by b raised to n. Again, we're just going to distribute the exponent or the power. So this thing, this whole thing should be equal to a raised to n over b raised to n. Okay. So, six law, we have a raised to m divided by n. And this is just equal to the, this is, this is actually for, we'll have this under radicals. 
So this one is equal to the nth root of a raised to m. And then number 7, so we have a raised to negative m. This one should be equal to 1 over a raised to m. So magiging reciprocal na siya. And also, if 1 over a raised to negative m, it would be equal to a raised to m. And then for number 8, if a raised to m is equal to a raised to n, then therefore m is equal to n. And lastly, just, just a note, any number raised to 0 should be equal to 1. And any number raised to 1 should be equal to itself. Okay? So let's um, solve some examples so that you can better understand this loss, how it is applied to numbers and algebraic expressions. Okay? Examples. So for number 1, we're just going to combine these two terms. x or 2 times x cubed and then negative 3 times x raised to 4. So let's rewrite this. So first we're going to multiply the numerical values first. So we have 2 times negative 3 which is equal to negative 6. And then we have this two variables x raised to 3 and then x raised to 4. So what are we going to do here? So, from the first law, which is a raised to m times a raised to n, this is equal to a raised to m plus n. So, we have here x should be equal to, or x cubed times x raised to 4 should be equal to x raised to 3 plus 4. And then, if we simplify this, we'd get negative 6 times x raised to 7. So, it's actually our final answer and then for number two so you have 2 raised to 14 divided by 2 raised to 10 so from this you have m is greater than n so what you're going to use is this one a raised to m minus n but um, just to simplify things further what I usually do is I just cancel everything out. If, um, for example, in this case, let's try this. Um, 2 raised to 4 divided by 2 raised to 3. Now, I could rewrite this this way. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? And then for the denominator, we have 2 times 2 times 2. Now, from our basic mathematics, I could cancel this out. Like terms. This 2 over 2, this is equal to 1, right? And then this one would be equal to 1 as well. And this, this one would be equal to 1 as well. What would be, uh, we, we will be left with, with 2 over 1, which is basically just 2, right? So I'm going to apply that concept in solving this um, different terms or different problems with fractions. So basically, I'm just going to cancel out two-thirds from two-fourths. So what I've be left here is an exponent of one. So I could easily write this as, you know, two. So it's quite simple, diba? So let's erase this and continue with solving our problems. So for number two, you have two raised to 14 divided by two raised to 10. So I could cancel this whole thing out, two raised to 10 and minus it to two raised to 14. So what we'd be left with is 14 minus 10 is just equal to 4. So this is 2 raised to 4. So I'm going to apply the same thing again for number 3. So cancel out this whole term, 2 raised to 10. And then for the denominator, we'd be left with 14 minus 10. We'd be left with 4. So, rewriting that, we have 1 over 2 raised to 4. So, that's the final answers. So, let me just highlight it. Okay. So, for problem number 4. So, we're going to divide two terms. 
uh, 2 times x times y raised to 3 times z divided by 4 times x squared times y times w. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to separate similar terms first. So here, let me rewrite it. So we have 2 over 4. If we simplify this further, we'd get 1 half, right? So 2 divided by 4 is just 1 half. And then for x, we have x over x squared. And then for y, we have y cubed over y. And then we have z, let's say this is over 1. And then w, 1 over w. Okay? So simplifying this, we have x, let's cancel that out. And then we're going to cancel out the, um, the exponent for the denominator. And then for y, we're going to cancel this one. And then we're going to cancel the numerator here. 2 or with 3 minus 1, which is just 2. And then for the next two terms, simplest form na sila. So we could simplify this further or rewrite this. So we have here 1 half times 1 over x times y squared over 1 times z over 1 times 1 over w. Uh, rewriting it, um, to further simplify it, we get y squared times z over 2 times x times w. And that's the final answer for number 4. Okay, for number 5 naman, so similar approach lang tayo. We're just going to combine similar terms. So we have here negative 4 squared over negative 4, quantity negative 4 squared. And then we're going to multiply that to z squared over z cubed. Now just a note, there's a difference between these two terms. So when you multiply or when you um how do we say this when you raise negative 4 to 2 what you'd actually be doing is the sign would be outside so you'd get negative here times 4 times 4 and then for the value here below so quantity negative 4 raised to 2 what you'd actually be doing is quantity negative 4 times negative 4 so you'd get two different values. Because from this one, you'd get negative 16. And then from this one, negative 4 times negative 4 is actually positive 16. So negative times negative is positive, right? Okay, so what about yung z terms natin? So we have here z squared, so we could cancel it because the denominator is much bigger. So z cubed. So we're going to cancel out the exponents. 3 minus 2, you'd be left with 1. So we're writing it here. So we have 1 over z raised to 1. So any number raised to 1 is just equal to itself. Right here. a raised to 1 is equal to a. So let me just check if the video is working. Is it reflecting? Wait, it's... It hung up on me. Give me a second. So, okay. So, let's rewrite this to further simplify it. We have negative 16 over positive 16. You have negative 1. And then, for the second term, 1 over z. Right here. And that's our final answer. And let's wait for it while it's writing. There's some delay on the video. So let me just check again. And there you go. So it's negative 1 over z. Now for example number 6. So again, same approach long tayo. You have here 8 divided by 12. So simplifying this further. Common terms, 8 and 12. You have 4, right? So you have 4 
times 2 here and then for this one you have uh, 4 times 3 right and then we could cancel 4 here and then further and then for the next terms we just you know combine similar terms we have or isolate similar terms we have x squared here and there's still some delay in the video and I apologize for that but uh, bear with me so x squared divided by x and then for the y term you have y divided by y squared and then for z you have z raised to 5 divided by z raised to 50 yeah then let's um, cancel out some expressions so from here we could cancel x and cancel the exponent here so 2 minus 1 you'd get 1 and any number raised to 1 is just equal to the number itself a raised to 1 is equal to a right and then we have we can cancel y here and same thing you'd get 1 as an exponent z raised to 5 we could cancel and then from here we just minus the exponent 15 minus 5 you'd be left with z raised to 10 so let's rewrite to simplify things so we have here 2 2 thirds first times x over 1 times 1 over y times 1 over z raised to 10 and then simplifying that further we'd get 2x over 3y times z raised to 10 and that's the final answer for number 6 so let's highlight that yeah okay so for number 7 man so for number 7 you get negative 4 raised to 2 which is basically negative 16 and then the next thing that we're going to do we're just going to distribute this exponent to all our variables inside the term so you get say a raised to 3 and then b raised to 2 times 3 and then for c raised to 3 times 3 simplifying this further we'd get negative 16 times a cubed times b 2 times 3 is 6 b raised to 6 and then c 3 times 3 is 9 c raised to 9 and that's the final answer for number 7 negative 16 times a cubed times b 6 or b raised to 6 and then c raised to 9 and then for number 8 so we have two terms here the uh, first one and then the second one what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this exponent to all the variables inside that term just like in this case so you have a fraction here a over b raised to n and we're just going to distribute the exponent here so a raised to n then b raised to n right so that's what we're going to do here okay so we have x raised to 3 times 2 and then y raised to 4 times 2 divided by z raised to 5 times 2 and then for the second term you have z raised to 2 times 3 so this one so this one z raised to 2 times 3 is from the third law so quantity a raised to m raised to n is just equal to a raised to m times n okay so we have z raised to 2 times 3 and then for the denominator of the second term you have x raised to 2 times 4 and then y raised to 5 so let's simplify this so you have x raised to 6 and then y raised to 8 divided by z raised to 10 and then for the second term you have z raised to 6 and then for the denominator x raised to 8 and then y raised to 5 so um i'm, go I'm just going to isolate similar terms uh, like for example you have x6 here over x8 and then you have y8 over y5 
and then you have c6 over c10 right so we could cancel this out then you'd be left with an exponent for the denominator of 2 and then cancel this one you'd be left with a with a exponent of 3 and then cancel this one you'd be left with an exponent of 4 right okay so let's rewrite that to simplify things so you'd be left with y cube or y raised to 3 divided by x raised to 2 and then z raised to 4 is that right yes so that's the final answer for example number 8 let's try a few more problems so example number 9 so we have here 5 raised to negative 2 times x raised to negative 3 times y raised to 11 all over x raised to 2 times y raised to negative 5. So when you have a negative exponent such as this, 5 raised to negative 2, x raised to negative 3, and then y raised to negative 5, what you're going to apply is the law of exponent number 7 such as when you have a raised to negative m it would be equal to 1 over a raised to m and when you have 1 over a raised to negative m it would be equal to a raised to m so we're just going to apply that to our example here also we're going to separate the similar terms so that's right. So from 5 raised to negative 2, it would be equal to 1 all over 5 raised to 2. And then we have similar terms here. x raised to negative 3. So what happens here? 1 over x raised to 3. And then we have 1 over x squared. And then for the y term, we have y squared, or y raised to 11 over 1 times, what happens if you have a denominator with a negative exponent? It just becomes um, a raised to the positive or the absolute value of your exponent. So we could write that as y raised to 5 over 1 right so we could simplify this right so we get say 1 over 5 squared which is uh, 5 times 5 25 for the two x's you have x cubed times x squared you're just going to add the exponent so you get x raised to 3 plus 2 and that's equal to 5. So you have 25 raised to 5 here. And then for the numerator, so you get 1 and 1 here. So you don't have to write that. For the numerator, you have this too. So that's y raised to 11. And the other one is raised to 5. And that's just, that's just from the first law. You're just going to add the exponent. So you have y raised to 11 plus 5, which is 16. So that is the final answer for this problem. So let's highlight that. So another problem. Problem number 10. So we have quantity 3 times x squared times y all over y raised to negative 4 times z and this whole thing is raised to negative 2 so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to distribute this negative exponent just like in law of exponents 3 and law of exponents 5 and also in 4 oops Let's go back. 
So let's do that while also we're going to separate the similar terms or we're going to group together the similar terms. So let's do that. So we have 3 raised to negative 2 and multiplied by x raised to 2 times negative 2. So this is all all over 1. And then you have y. So y here is raised to 1 times negative 2 all over. So you get y raised to negative 9 times negative 2. Multiply by 1 over z raised to negative 2. So let's um, simplify these terms. So what happens when you have a negative exponent? So you get this. When a is equal to or when a is raised to negative m, that will be equal to 1 over a raised to m. So let's apply that. So you'd get 1 over 3 raised to 2, which is basically 3 times 3, 9, right? So let's change this to 9. So our x times or x raised to negative or x raised to 2 times negative 2. So you'd get x raised to negative 4. Again, when you have a negative exponent, you're going to use the law of exponent number 7, right? So our x would become a denominator now. x raised to positive 4. That's equal to or the numerator would be 1. What about the y? So you have negative um, negative 2 for the exponent here in our numerator. And for the denominator, we actually have, so let's, uh, let's write it down. So for this one, negative 9 times negative 2 becomes positive, right? So this would become 18. So let's write that down. So for the first y, so it becomes a denominator. The second y becomes y raised to 18, right? So let's simplify that further. Do I have enough space? Yeah, I think we can make it. So that's 1 for the whole thing, for the whole numerator. And then we have 9 times x raised to 4 times y raised to. So from the first law we have here, we're just going to add 2 plus 18. So you get y raised to 20. Let's check. Is that our final answer? 9 times x raised to 4. Oh, I think we forgot a term. We forgot z. Yeah. So let's move this a bit. Because do I have enough space? I don't think we have enough space. So let me transfer it here, down here. Yeah. So we forgot. <laughs> Uh, this term, which is 1 over z raised to negative 2. So what uh, what do we do when we have this type of scenario? So we're again, we're going to apply the law of exponent number 7. So this one specifically. So 1, whenever our exponent is a denominator and it's negative, it would uh, we could apply this one, right? So let's write that. So it becomes... The numerator z squared over 1 and then simplifying it we're just going to add here z squared and yeah I think that's that's the final answer for this problem so let's highlight that yeah okay um let's try another one so problem number 11 so let me write that down first. So 
So problem number 11. Your example number 11. So you have two terms here. Two terms here. So the first term, we have 3 times a squared all over 2 times x raised to negative 1. And the whole thing would be a raised to 3. And then for the second term, we have x raised to negative 3 all over 4 times a raised to negative 2. And the whole thing is raised to negative 1. So um, you don't really need to be as detailed as this one when you're solving this problem. I'm just showing it to you so that you know you could easily um, understand the concept but um, this is very basic mathematics and I know that you could um, easily solve this without going into this type of detail so yeah um, anyway let's approach um, example number 11 so what I'm going to do is uh, what I will distribute this first to the variables inside our term. But first, simplify this first. Itong mga negative exponents natin here. So what happens when you have a denominator with a negative exponent? You could just bring it up. Right? So, let me rewrite that. So 3 raised to 3. They just, uh, while doing that, I would also distribute this exponent to all our variables. So 3 raised to 3 times a raised to 2 times 3. And then this one will be brought to the numerator. So you get x raised to 1 times 3. And then this would be all over 2 raised to 3. There you go. And then multiply that to this term. Now when you have a numerator with a negative exponent, you could use again this um, this law of exponent. So what happens is that when a is raised to negative m, you get 1 over a raised to m. So this one will be brought down to the denominator. So we get x raised to 3. And then, again, we're going to distribute this one, negative 1. So, we have x raised to 3 times negative 1. Well, it will become a bit redundant. So, let me change my tactics here. Okay, how what I'm going to do is, I'm going to distribute this first. So that it can become, our exponents can become positive And we don't have to flip it over um, twice. So we have, let's say, here x raised to negative 3 times negative 1. It would be just equal to positive 3, right? So let me erase this and change that to 3. Okay. So for the denominators, we have 4 raised to negative 1. And then for a, okay, wait. Since this is 4 raised to negative 1, what we could do is we could transfer this to the numerator so that the exponent would become positive, just like in this one. So I transfer 4 up here, 4 raised to 1, and erase this one. And then we have a raised to negative 2 times negative 1. So you have negative 2 times negative 1 here. And that will be equal to positive 2. So I'll change that to positive 2. Positive 2. There you go. So. Ah, by the way, this one. We forgot this one. So our a here is raised to 2 times 3. And that is just equal to 6. So let me change that to 6. So that will be 6, right? So I think we could simplify the terms now. So let's rewrite it. We have 3 times 3 is just 3 times 3. <laughs> or rather, 3 times 3 is just equal to 9. And then 2 times, or 2, raised to, raised to 3 is just equal to 8. Tama ba? Oh! 3 times 3 is not 9. 
that's three times three raised to three is equal to twenty-seven. Yeah. And then we have um let's see a. So we have a six here and a two here. Oh, we forgot we forgot four. So let's let's bring four to this um this portion. So let's move this. Let me just move this. And maybe we could make this a bit longer. So we have four here. So what happens here? Oh, we could actually divide. This one is just equal to two times two, right? And this one is equal to two times two times two, right? So we could cancel this one, this one, this one, this one. So we'd be left with two, right? So we could further simplify this um, by writing it where. <laughs> so this whole thing would actually be equal to 27 over 2, right? So I will rewrite that 27 over 2. So let's rewrite that 27 over 2, all right? So let's move this back here. So we have here a over or a raised to 6 over a raised to 2. So we could cancel that out and then the exponent for the numerator would be equal to 6 minus 2. That would be 4. Right? And then for the x terms, so we have here x raised to 3 times x raised to 3. So let's simplify that. So we have 27 times a raised to 4 times x. What happens uh, for this one? We're just going to add the exponents. So x raised to 3 plus 3 is 6. And this is all over 2. And that's the Final answer for example number 11. Okay, so let's proceed to our next topic. Our next topic is about radicals. So first let's define what is the nth root. So the nth root is a number x where n is usually assumed to be a positive integer. It is a number r which, when raised to the power n, yields x. So, I know it can be quite complicated because it's describing um, three things on one paragraph. But it's just basically describing these two expressions. So when you have r raised to n, and that is equal to x, when you're trying to solve for r, which is the nth root, it would be equal to the nth root of x. So our n here is the index, and then this one is called a radix, and then whatever term is inside our radix is called a radicat. So that's basically it. Now there are also laws. Uh, for the red guts and let me just write them down first okay there you go so we have here the loss of radicals or it could sometimes be called properties of radicals depending again this is depending on the what reference you're using so i got this from gilisanya's book which I am using as a reference for this section. So the first law of radicals, we have here a raised to 1 over n, and it is just equal to the nth root of a. The next law, law number 2, we have a raised to m over n, and it is just equal to the nth root of a raised to m. Or it could also be expressed this way, so quantity of n root of a raised to the power of m. For number 3, 
So we have quantity of the nth root of a raised to n, which is basically just equal to b radicate or a. And then for number four, we have the nth root of a times b, and that's just equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Now for number five, we have nth root of a over b, and that's just equal to the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. Also, we have a condition that b must not be equal to zero. Now for number six, we have the m, m, how do you pronounce that? m root of the nth root of b is just equal to the m nth root of b or the m times n root of b. So yeah, that those are the properties or the laws of radicals. Now to better understand this, uh, let's try solving some problems. Okay, so let me just um, write them down first. So example, let's write here, example. So the first one, let's, write, let's start here. Let's say we have 3 raised to 54 times x raised to 6 times y raised to 8. So the cube root of 54 times x raised to 6 times y raised to 6. And we're going to simplify um, this whole um, expression. So first, what can we do here? So maybe let's determine first the prime factorization of 54. So we could actually do that by using our calculator. So let's use our calculator. So how do we do that? Just type in 54 equals and then shift and then you're going to pre press this prime factorization p fact right there and you'd get 2 times 3 raised to uh, 3 raised to 3 right and we could write that here oops let's use the ink so let's rewrite this whole term so we have the cube root and then we have 2 times 3 raised to 3, right? And then we have our x raised to 6. So could we simplify this? So we have x raised to 6 is just 2 times 3, right? So x raised to 2 times x raised to 3. And then what about y? So y is just, hmm, 2 times, let's see, how are we going to simplify that? Could we bring it out, say, y times 2, we could, we can, what about y times 6, let's write that. So y times 6 times y times, okay, we, we did something wrong here. This is supposed to be x raised to 3 times x raised to 3 because we're going to add them, right? So x is raised to 3 plus 3 and we get, again, x raised to 6. So that's the whole expression. I think we need to further simplify our y. So let's break down this expression first. So from this, we can further break this down to y raised to 3 times y raised to 3 times y raised to 2, right? So we have y raised to 3 times 
Y raised to 3 times Y raised to 2. Correct. Yeah, there you go. So we could simplify this further by trying to bring out the factors that are cubed. So we have here, let's write that. Oops, ah, sorry. You're not seeing the rest of the expression. So maybe I'll move this inside so that you can see. Yeah. Okay. So let's simplify this by bringing out um, the terms that are cubed, such as this one 3 cubed, x cubed, x cubed, y cubed, y cubed. Okay. So let's write that. We have. Let's write it here. So we have here 3. And then x cubed times x cubed is just our x cubed. And then we have 2x cubes here. So when you bring it out, it, be, it will become x times x. And that's just x cubed. Or x squared, rather. So that's x squared. And then for y, again, there's 2y cubed. So when you bring it out, that will be y times y, which is just basically y squared, right? And then we have the remaining terms, which is 2 and then y squared. So the last term would be the cube root of 2 times y squared. And there you go, that's the final answer for sample number one. So let's try another problem. So say number two, maybe a fraction. So let's try 7 raised to 3, or 7 times the cube root of 48 times x raised to 4 times y raised to 8. And then divide the whole thing by the cube root of 6 times y squared. Okay, again, we're just going to apply the same um, approach uh, that we did in example number one. So let's get the prime factorization of 48. So 48 equals shift prime factorization. We have 2 raised to 4 times 3. Right. So we could write that down. 7 times cube root. So for 48, we have 2 raised to 4 times 3, right? But we could rewrite 2 as, so let's rewrite that. We could rewrite this as 2 cube times 2 times 3 yeah so that this whole thing is equal to 48 right then next we have x raised to 4 we could just break that down x cubed times x and then for y we have y cubed times y cubed times y squared and that's uh, the whole thing is cube root and then for the denominator, we have cube root of 6, which is basically 2 times 3. So we, can, we can't really do anything about that denominator, right? So we could just maintain it as 6. And then y squared. Again, we can't really do anything about that. So what we could do is um the the ones in the numerator, this one with a power of three, which you can't see again 
So let me move this out. So I apologize for that. Our calculator is blocking your view. So yeah, you have that. So we could transfer these terms that are raised to the power of 3 on the other side. So what happens is, so you get 7 times 2 times x times y squared, right? And the whole thing is raised to, or the whole thing is multiplied to the cube root of, what do we have left? 2 times 3 times x times y squared. And then for the denominator, we'd still have the cube root of 6 times y squared. So let's simplify this further. So 7 times 2, you get 14, right? Then you have x here, multiply that by y squared. And then multiply by the cube root of 2 times 3, which is 6 times x times y squared. And then divide the whole thing by the cube root of 6 times y squared. Right? So, could we further simplify this? Can we? Can we? I think we can, right? So, if you look at uh, this law in law number 4, the nth root of a times b is just equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. So I think we could um, separate this these terms further. So let's write that. Okay, so we have 14 times x raised to, or x times y raised to 2. Cube root of um, x multiplied by the cube root of 6y squared so that I could cancel this term out right and the whole the denominator is cube root of 6 times y squared and from there I could cancel this whole expression right so it's quite simple now so we're writing that for the final answer it's just 14 times x times y squared Multiply by the cube root of x. So is that the? That's the final answer. For example, number two. So let's highlight that. There you go. Again, you're not seeing it. I apologize. So probably let's move this down here. There you go. So that's the final answer. 14 times x times y raised to 2 multiplied by the cube root of x. So that's um, the final answer for number 2. So maybe another one. The last one. So let's do this uh, for number 3. I'd write it further inside so we'd have more space. So for number 3. You have, say, 2 times uh, the 4th root of, hmm, say, 32 times A raised to 8 times B raised to 6. And the whole thing is divided by, say, the 4th root of A raised to negative 1 times B raised to 2. There you go. So how do we approach this one? So yeah, first let's look at the prime factorization for 32. So let's see. We have 32 equals shift prime factorization. We get 2 raised to 5. So hmm, what else can we do? What about the negative? Uh, exponent negative one yeah okay 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 so let's do this so this whole thing is equal to two 
multiply by the fourth root of 32, which is 2 raised to 5, right? I could write that um, in a different manner, such as 2 raised to 3, or rather 2 raised to 4 times 2, and that will be equal to still 32. Now for the a, I could write that as a raised to 4 times a raised to 4. And then for b, I could write that as b raised to 4 times b raised to 2. Right? And then for the denominator, we have uh, the fourth root of what happens in this one if you have a negative exponent. So I could just express that as 1 over a raised to, so 1 over a raised to 1, which is just basically a, right? And then we have b squared. So 1 times b squared is basically b squared, right? So there you go. And then what can we do from here? Uh, we could transfer this. All the terms that are raised to the power of 4. So we're just going to bring those up. So let's write that. Say we get 2 times 2 times a times a times b. Multiplied by the fourth root of 2 times b squared. And then the fourth root of b squared over a right so simplifying this further we get 2 times 2 and that's just 4 a times a it's just a squared and then we have b here and then hmm let's transfer let's try transferring to outside can we do that hmm So what, what would be actually left with is just this term. So let's write it. The fourth root of 2b squared over the fourth root of b squared over a, right? And let's look at our loss. So from the loss, we could basically apply this one. So we're basically at this stage where n uh, the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b is actually equal to the nth root of a over b, right? So I could just apply that here on this term. So I could rewrite this as 4a squared times b times the fourth root of 2b squared over b squared over a, right? I could further simplify this by this whole term. So let's look at this whole term on it. Okay, my video stop. Wait now. So let's check. Is it working? It's not working. So let me take a pause first. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's working again. Okay, so let's um, focus first on, on this term. So how do we simplify this further? So we could simplify this as the fourth power of 2 times b squared over 1 times a time over b squared. So what happens here is I could cancel this one and I could cancel this one. And that would just be, the whole thing would just be equal to the fourth power of 2 times a right and we could simplify this further so let's write this 4 times a squared times b multiplied by the power of 4 or the uh, the fourth root of 2 times a and that's the final answer for the third example so yeah there you go Okay, so I just realized you were not able to see um, 
new computations on the last part. So let me just move our calculator to the other side. So this was what I was talking about earlier. Um, I was trying to simplify this term into this one. So you'd get uh, the fourth power of uh, 2 times b squared over 1 times a over b squared. So we could just cancel out these two terms and you'd be left with the fourth cube or the fourth root of 2 times a, which is basically this one. Yeah, so that's what you missed on <laughs> earlier because of our calculator. But I think I'll just keep our calculator here for um for demonstration purposes on our next uh, topics. So I think it's important that you become familiar with uh, using your calculators. Right now, this is the Canon. This is an emulator for Canon F789SGA which is the most recommended calculator right now for the board exam. Yeah, and I wanted to show you how you could use this calculator more effectively. So yeah, um, we're going to proceed with the next topic after this one. Right, so on to our next topic, which is logarithms. So what is a logarithm? It is the inverse function to exponential ratio. That means that logarithm of a given number x is the exponent to which another fixed number base b must be raised to produce that number x. Or otherwise, in simpler terms, if you have a number b raised to y and that is equal to x, if you want to solve for y, it would be just equal to log of x base 2 b provided that your x is greater than 0 and your b is greater than 0 and that your b is less than 1 or your b is not equal to 1 um why this conditions so if for example if your b is equal to 0 or less than 0 so for example you have b any number raised to zero is still zero and any number or one raised to any number it would still be one right? so that's why we have these conditions so an example of this one so we have log of 64 base to 2 and that is equal to 6 so simplifying this we have I think original term here so 2 raised to 6 is equal to 64. So the logarithm base then, that is b equal to 10, is called the common logarithm. We also have the natural logarithm, logarithm that has a number e that is uh, b approximately equal to 2.718 as its base. So an example of this one is log uh, base of 10 or log of 1000 base of 10 is equal to 3 and then we have here log of x base to e is equal to ln x right okay so we'll proceed with the laws governing logarithms so we have around seven laws that we need to discuss so the first one you have log of x times y base to b and that's just equal to log of x base to b plus log of y base to b. For number 2, we have log of x over y base to b. And that's just equal to log of x base to b minus log of y base to b. And then, you know, it's quite similar to the loss of um, exponentiation. Right? So, okay. Number 3, log of x raised to p base to b is equal to p times log of x base to b. Number four, we have log of the nth root of x base to b is just equal to log of x base to b all over n. And then for number five, we have log of x base to b and that is equal to log of x base to k 
all over log of b raised to k and that's just equal to ln of x all over ln of b and then 6 you have log of b raised to b is just equal to 1 and then number 7 or last log of 1 base to b is just equal to 0 okay so some examples so let's try it out say you have a log of 2 4 3 base to 3 now do you solve this to solve this you're just going to use your calculators so you don't really need to make things uh, more complicated than that so if you're using this calculator or any calculator that has a log function what you're going to do is you're going to press alpha and then press log tapos you're just going to input the base uh, for this problem you have base 3 and or x is equal to 2 4 3 and then just press the equal sign you get the answer so that's just equal to 5 see it's quite simple um now let's try something that has some algebraic expressions algebraic expressions so let's try something a bit more complicated but not too much not too complicated so let's say we have log or three times log of x base to nine minus mm, log of x plus one base to nine so let's try and write this down to a single logarithm so what can we do here so simplifying this so if we would look at our law number three so you have basically this p log of x base to b so we could transform this one to this one uh it's uh for this term so let's rewrite that so we'd have log of x raised to 3 base to 9 what about the other term what can we do for that i think that's that's the simplest form of that term so you have log of 9 or log base to 9 for x plus 1 so from here what can we do from this you have a negative sign here so we could use uh, law number two to simplify this further so for law number two let's write it down here since we don't have enough space so let's write it here so we have a log of nine this is equal to quantity so x cubed all over x plus one and that's the final answer for example number two so let's just highlight that so another let's see what else number three so you have mm, log of x three times log of x base to two plus one half log of x base to two again then minus two log of x plus 1 base to 2 again so let's try to reduce this uh, to a single logarithm so what do we know so from this one so for the first term we could apply this to the third law 
so we could rewrite this as log of x raised to 3 base to 2. Now, I think it's better if we write this down here so we'd have more space. And then for 1 half, for the second term, 1 half log of x base to 2. So what can we apply here? We could apply this one, law number 4. This is basically law log of x base to 2 all over 2 for this one. Diba? So we're writing that we have so log of log of x no log base of two times the square root of x. So this is the second root of x, which is basically you know your square root. And then for the third term. Can we simplify this further? Yeah, I think we could simplify this further by applying the third law. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's let's apply that. So for the third one, let's do log base of two. So we have x plus one raised to two. Now how do we simplify this for? So let's combine these two terms first and then we add this last. So let's write it. So log of x cubed base to 2. So this would be positive. So we're going to apply law number 2 in this one. So we'd have log base to 2. For the numerator, we have square root of x. And then for the denominator, we have x plus 1 raised to 2. And then we have, let's combine the first term. So we're going to combine these two terms. So let's rewrite that. I think we, we could fit this in. So we're going to use the first law. This is since this is wait, since this is an addition, like this one. So let's rewrite this as log uh log base of two times, and then we're we're just going to multiply these two terms, just like here, x times y. So we'd have x cubed times square root of x all over x plus 1 squared. And that's the final answer for example number 3. So let's just highlight that. Okay, uh, another example. So number four, number four, say we have ln uh, two times ln of x minus one third ln of x plus three ln of x plus five. So again, simplify that into, into a single logarithm. So from here, for the first term, we're going to apply. We're going to apply the third law. So we have ln x squared, right? And then for the second term, we're going to apply the fourth law. So we're writing that. So this is negative. We'd have. Wait. We're long. We're using long. Long base two. Um, x. How do you write this? Uh, base two three. With the. Malay, malay, malay. Wait, wait. I got confused. 
So we have here we have lol of the cube root of x. Yeah. And then for the last term, it will become ln times, let's write this better, ln times x plus 5 raised to 3. Yeah. Then simplifying this, so let's mm, combine the first and second terms first. So that's ln x squared all over the cube root, cube root of x. That was our last term, which is ln of x plus 5 raised to 3. And then we're going to combine these last two terms. So that's positive. We're just going to multiply these two. So let's write that. So you have x cubed or x squared here times x plus 5 raised to 3. And then for the denominator, you have cube root, cube root of x and that's our final answer for example number four okay next sample number five example number five so let's say we have log base of three x x squared times x minus 9 so we're going to um write the sum or difference of multiple logarithms so we're, we're going to convert this um single logarithm into its um longer form so it's either a sum or a difference of um, two or more logarithms. So from here, what can we do? So we could distribute our logarithmic function, right? So let's write that. So hmm, this is just basically the application of your first law where you have um, log of x times y base to b and then that's just equal to log of x base to b and then log of y base to b and we're just going to apply that here so let's rewrite this so we'd have log of x squared that's not squared so log of x squared base to 3 plus log of x minus 9 base to 3 again and then further simplifying this we get 2 times log of x base to 3 plus log of x minus 9 base to 3 and I think that's the um, longest form that we could achieve so that's our answer for sample number five. So yeah, I think that's enough examples for logarithms. Next, uh, we're going to tackle some algebraic expressions. So what is algebra? Algebra is just a shorthand and generaliz generalization of arithmetic in which letters are used to represent real numbers. Algebraic expressions is a collection of constants and variables with at least one operation in mathematics. So, ano ba yung variables natin? Yung variables natin, these are yung letters. So, you can have Roman letters or Arabic letters or Greek letters representing your variables. And then you have your constants representing your uh, constants that are written with real numbers. 
Uh, what about terms? Terms is just a number or a product of a number and one or more variables raised to powers. Expression preceded by plus or minus sign. Examples of terms. So you have one term here, r raised to 2, 2 over x, a plus b all over a minus b, square root of y, um, quantity x minus y raised to the fourth power. So these are examples of one terms or one term. And then these are examples of two terms. So you have a times b minus 3. So you have one term here and another term here. And then you have a minus a b c divided by 3 minus 1. So you have one term here and then another term here. You have 1 over x minus 1 over y. You have 2 minus r squared. So there are examples of your terms. Now, what about a constant? A constant is a symbol that assumes one specific value. So, you have constants such as pi, number 2, e, c, or k. And then you have your variables like I, like I explained earlier. A symbol that assumes many values. So, you have your x, y, z. You can also have Greek letters here like your beta, your phi your rho, your omega, so iba-iba. Now, for what is a monomial? So, a monomial is a product of a constant in a variable raised to a non-negative power. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the positive integers as exponents of the variables. An example, so the degree of this term, 2, times x raised to 3 times y raised to 5 is equal to 8. So you're just going to sum up the exponents. So you have 3 plus 5, that's equal to 8. Another example, you have negative 4 times x times y raised to 2 times z raised to 7. So its degree is equal to 9. So you have 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. Okay. Examples of monomials. So you have here a monomial. Negative 5 times x raised to 4 times y. You have square root of 2 times x. You have square root, no, you have x raised to the power of 7. Now these are examples of monomials. Now the next examples are terms that are not monomials. So you have x raised to negative 1 half. You get um, square root of x, you get cube root of y, you get x raised to negative 2, you get um, 2 divided by x raised to 5. So these are terms that are not monomials. So again, let's go back to the definition of the monomial. It is the product of a constant and a variable raised to a non-negative power. So kailangan non-negative yung adding exponents. Unlike here. You get negative one half, then you have uh, uh, your square root, cube root, negative two. And then this one, if you bring it up, you'd get a negative exponent as well. And there you go. So next we have your binomial. So binomials are just sums or differences of two monomials having different degrees. Then you have your trinomial. It is a sum or difference of three monomials with three different degrees. And then some other definitions. Polynomial. So a polynomial is an algebraic expression that can be written as a finite sum of terms called monomials. The degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent of all the terms of polynomial. So an example, you have a x raised to 3 minus 5 times x squared minus 2 times x raised to 6 minus 8 times x plus 9. And the degree of this polynomial is equals to 6. So 6 because uh, from our definition, degree of a polynomial is just the largest exponent of all the terms of a polynomial. So our largest exponent for this polynomial is 6. 
Another example, we have 7 times x raised to 3 times y raised to 2 minus 4 times x times z raised to 5 plus 2 times x raised to 3 times y. And the degree of this polynomial is also 6. Because the largest exponent of all the terms here, so you get here in this first term you have 3 plus 2, you have 5. In this term, you have 1 plus 5, you get 6. In this term, you get 3 plus y, you get 4. So our largest one comes from this term, which is 6. Now, what are similar or like terms? So similar or like terms are two monomials with the same variable raised to the same power. An example of this is 4 times x raised to 3 and 7 times x raised to 3. So these are examples of similar or like terms. So we would need that definition when we go into um, mathematical uh, operations with polynomials. Okay, let's start with addition of algebraic expressions. So to add two or more polynomials, we're just going to add similar or like terms together. So we have an example here, example number one. So we have three terms, uh, 3x squared minus 4x minus 4y. 7x squared minus 2y minus 2, and then negative 4x squared plus x minus y minus 7. So we're just going to rewrite this in your standard addition format. So for the first term, we have positive 3x squared. For the second term, we have positive 7x squared. For the third term, we have negative 4x squared. Again, we return to the first term, or the first expression rather. So you have negative 4x. On the second expression, we have we don't have anything that has an x on it. That has a literal coefficient of x. But on the third expression, you have positive x there. So let's write that down. So negative 4x, positive x. Again, on the first term, you have negative 4y. On the second term, you have negative 2y. On the third expression, rather, <laughs> on the third expression, you have negative y there. So let's write that. So negative 4y, negative 2y, negative y. We don't have any constants here on the first expression, but on the second expression, you have negative 2, and then on the third, you have negative 7. So yeah, negative 2, negative 7. Then we're just going to add similar terms. So add similar terms. So you have 3 plus 7 plus negative 4. You'd get 6x squared. You're just going to copy down the literal coefficient, yung x squared natin. And then negative 4 plus positive x, you'd get negative 3x. And then you have negative 4 plus negative 2 plus negative y. You'd get negative 7y. And then you have negative 2 plus negative 7. You'd get negative y. So that's the answer for this example. Okay, so what about subtraction? So to subtract polynomials, we're going to change the sign of the subtrahend and proceed as in addition. So here in our example, we are to subtract this expression 4x minus y minus 3 from this expression 2x minus y minus 4. Now from these two expressions, this one is our subtrahend. So we're going to change its signs and then proceed with addition. So let's write that down. So this is 2x. Let's add more space there. 2x minus y minus 4. Then we're going to subtract 4x minus y minus 3 to that. Now before we proceed, we need to change the signs of our subtrahend. So you'd have negative 4x plus y plus 3. 
Then you have positive 2x here, negative y, negative 4. And then we're just going to proceed with addition. So we'd have here positive 2x plus negative 4x, you'd get negative 2x. Then you have negative y plus positive y, you'd get 0. So this will just cancel each other out. And then you have negative 4 plus positive 3, you'd get negative 1. So that's the final answer for our example. So it's very important to note the wording of the problems. Uh, we're going to subtract this term or this expression from this expression. Um, most common mistake that you'd probably make is you could have interchanged this. Like you could have written this as 4x minus y minus 3. And then you're going to subtract 2x minus y minus 4. So that's one of the most um, common mistakes that you could make for this type of problem. Okay. Okay, next, uh, product of polynomials. So to multiply two monomials, we're going to use the cumulative, associative, and the loss of exponents in multiplication. And to multiply two polynomials, we're going to use, well, two or more polynomials, we're going to use the distributive law. So let's tackle some examples. So we have here negative 4 raised to 100 times x raised to 15 times y raised to 23. And then we're going to multiply that whole term to 4 raised to 45 to x raised to 32 times y raised to 85 and then w times z. So... Let's try, let's write that down. So 4 times 4. So from these two terms, so from the loss of exponents, this is just negative 4 raised to 100 plus 54. And then for our x, x raised to 15 times x raised to 32. That's just x raised to 15 plus 32. And then for our y, that's just y raised to 23 times y raised to 85. So that's just equal to y raised to 23 plus y uh, plus 85. And then we have w, z. Now let's simplify this further. So we get negative 4 times our negative 4 raised to 154 times x raised to 47 times y raised to 108 times w times c and that's the answer for our first example our next example so let's bring this down a bit Maybe a bit more. Okay. So we have here two terms. We have 5 raised to x squared or 5 times x squared times y. And then the second term, uh, 3xy minus 4 times x cubed plus 2xy squared. So we're going to multiply these two um, expressions. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to distribute yung ating 5x squared times y dito sa ating second expression. So you're just going to, to do that, you're just going to multiply 5x squared times y to 3xy and then you're going to multiply it again to 4x cubed, and then you're going to multiply it again to 2xy cubed. So, ganyan yung ating distributive um, log. So, let's do that. 
So you get 5x cubed times y, or yeah, 5x cubed times y times um, 3 times x times y. So that's equal to, let's write that down, 5x cubed y times 3xy plus, again you have 5x cubed times y times negative 4x cubed plus, so 5x squared times y times 2xy squared. So, simplify lang natin to. We get 15x cubed y squared. Plus, no, that's minus. Kasi you have uh, positive 5 times negative 4. So, you get negative 20 times x raised to 5 times y. Plus 10 raise uh, 10 times x cubed times y cubed. And that's the final answer for example number 2. Now, there are actually a lot of ways to solve this problem. Another approach to this one is yung vertical multiplication natin. So, how do we write that? So, um, just like your elementary multiplication, or your, your very basic multiplication. So you have your exp, uh, one expression here. So let's let me just write it down. So you have 3xy minus 4x cubed plus 2xy squared. And then you're going to multiply that to 5x squared times y. So, just like the way you did multiplication when you were in grade school. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply this term to this term. And then after that, here. And then after that, here. Just like what we did dito. So, it's just a different visual uh, presentation. So, let's write that. So, for the first one, you have positive. 10x cubed y cubed. Maybe we'll move this further in para hindi ganun kalayo. Yeah. And then 5x squared y times negative 4x cubed. So that's negative 20x raised to 5 times y. And then uh, 3xy times 5x squared y would get 15x cubed times y cubed. And that's basically the same answer that we had earlier. Okay, another example where to simplify this group of expressions. So there are basically about maybe um, four expressions here. So you have this uh, uh, one, then you have this group of expressions here. Uh, so you have an inner group right here. Now the way to approach is you want to have this first simplified. The 4x times quantity 5 minus x squared times y. So you want to simplify this first before we proceed. So, let's do that. Simplify muna natin. So, that's just equal to so you have your 3x cubed times y minus you get negative 4x times 5. So, that's negative 20x plus negative 4x times negative x squared times y. So that's positive. Diba? Negative times negative. So you get positive 4 times x cubed times y. And then the second expression is, is 2x plus y squared. And then from this, we're just going to distribute 
we're just going to apply the distributed law to these two expressions. So, there's a delay in our video. Yeah, we're just going to distribute that. Okay, so let's write that down. So, the first one, we're going to distribute 2x to this polynomial. Yeah. So, you'd get 2x times. Oh, wait. I think we should simplify this first. Sorry, sorry. So, you have like terms here inside the first expression. So, like terms because they have the same literal coefficients with the same exponents. Diba? So, we could combine that further. So, we'd get 7 x cubed times y minus 20x times 2x plus y squared. Yeah. Okay, let's proceed with the distribution. So, we have 2x times 7x cubed times y minus 20 times x plus y squared times yx cubed y minus 20x. Okay. Distribute it further. So, into x natin, we're going to distribute it here to this expression and our y cubed or y squared, we're going to distribute to this expression. So, let's write that. So, you get 2x times y cubed times y. You get 14 x raised to 4 y. 2x times negative 20x would get negative 40x squared. Then for this second grouping, you get positive y squared times 7x cubed times y. So you get 7x cubed times y cubed. And then you get 7 squared times negative 20x. So that's negative 20xy squared. So let's check if we have similar terms. I think that's it. So we'll end in similar terms. So what you could probably do here is you could rearrange this uh, by its um, degree. So, highest degree first uh, would be written. So, let's rewrite that. So, the first one would have, Dito, your degree is 6. Then you have 5. You have 3. Then you have 2. So, let's write that. 7x cubed y cubed. Plus 14x raised to 4 times y minus 20xy squared. And then minus 40x squared. And that's the final answer for our example. Now another method of solving this is by using FOIL method. So, FOIL method, let's write that down. Using FOIL method. So, FOIL method natin. So, let's write down our expression. So, dito na tayo sa simplified yung na-distribute na natin yung terms dito. So, na-simplify na natin yung dalawang expressions. So, let's do that here. So, you get 7x cubed times y minus 20x times 20x or 2x plus y squared. So, for the file method, what you're going to do is, so, you get your f and Probably your O somewhere here, I, and then L here. So, in the FOIL method, your F stands for the first terms. 
Oh, may delay ulit sa video natin. Let's wait for a minute. Wait lang. So, ayan. Okay, the F in our FOIL method stands for the first term. So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply first the first terms. So, under F, we have 7 x cube times y times 2x then under o which is the outer terms we're going to multiply 7x cube and y squared so you have 7x cube y times y squared and then i stands for the inner terms so you're going to multiply the inner terms Ito. so you have negative 20x times 2x tapos let me just compress this para may space tayo then for the l your L just stands for the last terms. So our last terms is this one and this one. So we're going to multiply that. So you have negative 20x times y squared. Tapos simplify lang natin to further. So you'd get 14 x raised to 4 times y, 7 x raised to 3 times y raised to 3, negative 4 times x squared, negative 20 times x times y squared. And that's the final answer. So, lagyan lang natin to, positive, this is positive, this is positive. So, let me highlight that. Okay. Okay, next, uh, addition and subtraction of fractions. So, addition of sub and subtraction of fractions depends on the kind of denominator of the fraction that we have. So, for example, if you have um, two fractions with the same denominator, it's quite simple. Uh, ganito lang siya. But if you have two fractions or two or more fractions that have different um, denominators, you're going to have to compute for the least common denominator of all your fractions before you proceed with additional subtraction. So we have an example here. So we have two expressions that we are going to subtract. So first, um, we're going to look for the LCD or the least common denominator of our two fractions. So, to do that, what we're going to apply is yung ating prime factorization. So, we're going to express our given um, denominators by its uh, prime, prime factors. So, first we have x squared. Oops. So, we have x squared. x minus 1 squared. And then the second expression is x squared minus 1, x minus 1. So these are equal to, so this one you have x squared. And then you have x minus 1 squared, x minus 1 squared being here. And then last, we have x plus 1. So, the least common denominator for this one, LCD, is equal to x squared times x minus 1 squared times x plus 1. 
So that's our least common denominator. So now we could proceed with our subtraction. So from the least common denominator, so we're just going to apply this one dito sa ating problem. So our least common denominator, so we'll continue it. Is x2, x1 squared, x plus 1. Then we have the first term, which is 2x minus 1. Multiply natin yan by x plus 1. And then the second term, we have 2 multiplied by x squared. Okay. Next, we simplify this further. So we get 2x squared plus x minus 1 minus 2x squared all over our denominator, which is x squared times x minus 1 squared times x plus 1. Tapos, simplify this further. I think we could simplify this further. So, similar terms. We have similar terms here. What we'd be left with is x minus 1. So, magka-cancel out yung 2x squared natin. So, we'd be left with x minus 1. All over... Copy na lang natin kasi they're, they're just the same. So, ayan. And then, I think we could further simplify this. Kasi this one, we could cancel out. Diba? So, let's simplify it further. So, you'd get, you'd be left with x2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And the numerator would be 1. Simplifying this further. So let's write it down here. Our x2 is just x squared minus 1 all over 1. So there. That's the final answer for this example. So let's highlight it. So there you go. So let's look for another example. Hmm. Ano maganda? Maybe something with three. Uh, let's try adding three fractions. So for a second example, let's try three over x. Minus 2 all over x plus 1 plus 2 x squared. So we're just going to combine this into a single rational algebraic fraction. So combine that in share. So what would be the LCD for these three denominators? So it would be x squared times x plus 1. Next, we're just going to distribute our least common denominator to our numerator. So, we have 3x or 3 times x times x plus 1. And then, minus 2 times x squared and then plus 2 times x plus 1 and then simplify this we have 3x squared plus 3x 
minus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. All over x squared x plus 1. Simplify this further. So combine natin like terms. 3x squared minus 2x squared. You get x squared. And then you have positive 3x plus positive 2x. So you get positive 5x plus 2. All over x squared x plus 1. There you go. That's our final answer for this example. So shade lang natin. Yeah. So, okay, next is division of polynomials. So, in dividing polynomials, we're going to use the loss of exponents in division. So, review natin. And the buying loss of exponents natin in division. So, if we look at here, ito yung ating loss of exponents in division. So, if we have a raised to m divided by a raised to n, so it can either be equal to a raised to m times, or a raised to m minus n if m is greater than n. But it would be equal to 1 if m is equal to n, and it would be equal to 1 over a raised to n minus m if m is less than n. So, you could also use this one, yung distribution natin. So, if quantity a over b is raised to n, you could, ju you could just distribute our exponent. So, it would be equal to a raised to n divided by a, divided by b raised to n. So, ganun. Okay, let's go back to our discussion. So, to divide a polynomial by a, mon by a monomial, we could use this theorem. So, we have a plus b divided by c. This is our monomial c. And it would be just equal to a. This is our first term. And this is b would be our second term. You, you are just going to divide each term by c. And then add them. But to divide a polynomial by another polynomial with at least two terms... This type of division is applied only when the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. So, the degree of the numerator should always be larger than the degree of the denominator. Now, for exact division or when the remainder is equal to zero, you have your dividend all over your divisor should be equal to the quotient itself. But if the remainder is not equal to zero, you'd have your dividend divided by your divisor equal to your quotient plus your remainder divided by the, div the divisor. Okay? So, let's try some examples. So, in this example, we did a long division. So, we're going to divide this term. 5 times x raised to 3 minus 2 times x raised to 2 minus 18 times x minus 10. And we're going to divide that by x minus 2. So, gamitin natin long division. We're going to use long division. So, to use long division, uh, if you guys remember your um, elementary, your grade school division, where to say you're dividing 100 by 10. So, it's quite similar. So, pare, um, there are um, quite a lot of similarities to that approach to this, um, to what we're doing now. So, ilalagay lang natin sa loob yung ating um, dividend. So, we have 5x3 minus 2x squared minus 18x minus 100 divided by x plus 2. So, here, what we're going to do, we're just going to divide 
the first term and then place it here dito sa it as so i repeat divide that in. so what we're doing is divide here 5x3 divided by x is actually equal to 5x squared and yun yung ilalagay natin dito yan so then yan yung 5x squared and then once that we have this you have your 5x squared you're going to multiply that to your divisor so you're going to divide or multiply your divisor by 5x squared so multiplying that you'd get 5x cubed plus 10x squared which is this one nakita nya eto yeah and then you're just going to subtract that to your dividend so subtracting that uh, remember you're going to change your signs so this positive 5x3 would become negative and this become this positive 10x squared would become negative so, so subtract lang natin siya to this polynomial so this one will cancel out uh, negative 2x squared plus or minus positive 10x squared is just equal to negative 12x squared. Tapos, we're going to bring down another term, negative 18x. And then, we're going to divide again the first terms. So, yung ating x and negative 12x squared. So, you'd have negative 12x squared divided by x. That's just equal to negative 12x. And you can see that here. Tapos, once you have that, you're going to multiply that to this, to your divisor. So, times negative 12x. So, this would be equal to negative 12x squared plus or rather minus, minus to minus, 24x. So, ito yan. Wait lang. Naglalag. Let's wait for the video to load. Ayan. So, dun yelling yung negative 12x squared minus 24x. So, again, we're going to subtract that to this. So, pag nag-subtract tayo, you're going to respect the signs. Ha? Huh? So, you have here, negative, negative, magiging positive to, right? So, maka-cancel out itong 12x squared natin. What we'd be left with is negative 18x and negative 24x. But this one, magiging positive to kasi may negative sign ka dito. So, negative times negative is positive, di ba? So, you have negative 18x minus negative 24x, you'd get positive 6x. Tapos, bring down natin ito, negative 10. Tapos again, we're going to divide this, the first terms. So, you have 6x divided by x, it gets 6. So, dun galing itong 6 ito. And then, the 6, you will multiply to this divisor. So, you have 6 times x plus 2. This is equal to 6x plus 12. So, dun galing ito. And then, you're going to subtract it again. So, minus natin tong buong term na to dito. So, cancel out, cancel out. You have negative 10 minus positive 12. You'd get negative 22. That negative 22 would now be our remainder. So, we could rewrite our, our, our quotient in our remainder. So, ito yung format natin since we have a remainder. So, you have your dividend, 
times x raised to 3 minus 2 times x raised to 2 minus 18 times x minus 10 divided by our divisor which is x minus 2. And it is equal to the quotient. So, ito yung quotient natin. This one. So, lagyan natin ng ano. Let's highlight it. So, this one is your quotient. So, our quotient, 5x squared minus 12x plus 6 minus, minus, because this is negative, we have a negative sign here, minus 22 all over your divisor. So, our divisor is x plus 2. Wait, may mali dito. So, i-correct ko lang to. Typo error. This is positive 2. Ayan. So, okay? Um, any questions? Kasi dito, I think, sa pagtuturo ko, ito yung kadalasan na nakalimutan na. Nakalimutan na nila yung long division ng polynomials. Nakalimutan na yung synthetic division of polynomials. So, okay naman. Everyone understood. Madali lang, di ba? Medyo maproseso lang. Kaya siguro hindi niya masyado maalala. So, okay. Let's proceed with the next example. So, sample tayo ulit. Um, something, a polynomial with three terms. Para medyo mas complicated. Medyo mas challenging. Medyo lang. So, let's proceed. Ang ating divisor is uh, 4 times y raised to 3, minus 2, y, minus 3. And then, our dividend is this one, here. So, you have negative or positive 12, y raised to 5, minus 8, times y raised to 4, minus 10, times y raised to 3, minus y raised to 2, minus 5. Notice, nagkaroon ako dito ng gap, kasi mapapansin nyo yung pattern ng ating degrees. So, to the 5th, to the 4th, to the 3rd, to the 2nd, nawala yung 1st degree. So, naglagay ako ng space dyan. So, okay. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to divide the first terms. So, we have here, so, sulit natin. So, we have 12y raised to 5 divided by 4y raised to 3. And that's equal to 3y squared. So, let's write it up here. 3y squared. And then, next, what we're going to do, we're going to multiply this to 3y squared. Okay? So, we have... 3y squared times 4y cubed, that's 12y raised to 5. And then, 3y squared times negative 2y, so we'd get negative 6y raised to 3. And then, 3y squared times negative 3, we'd get negative 9y squared. Again, we're going to subtract this whole expression to our initial um, dividend. So, this one will cancel out. This one will be brought down. So, so let's add in. So, we have negative 8y4. And then, you have negative 10y raised to 3 minus negative 6. That's just negative 4 y raised to 3. And then negative y squared minus negative 9 uh, negative 9 y squared. That would be positive 8 y squared. And then let's bring down negative 5 here. So how about natin to? Okay. So, next, we're going to divide the first terms again. So, negative 
8 times y raised to 4. Tapos, we have 4 times y raised to 3. So, that's negative 8 y raised to 4 divided by 4 times y raised to 3. And that's equal to negative 2y. So, let's write it up here. Negative 2y. And then again, we're going to multiply negative 2y here to, I, to our divisor. So, we get um, negative 2y times, wait lang ha, pain too big. So, you get negative 2y times 4y raised to 3. So, you get negative 8y4. Tapos, negative 2y times negative 2y. You get positive 4y squared. And then, negative 2y times negative 3y. You'd get positive 6y. Tapos, again, we're going to subtract this whole thing. So, this one will cancel out. This one will be brought down. So, you have negative 4y cubed. And then, you have... Excuse me. You have positive... This one beca will become negative, so 8 minus 4. So you'd have positive 4y squared. Then you have negative 6y. Then you have negative 5. So again, we're going to divide the first terms. So you have negative 4y cubed divided by 4y cubed. And that's just equal to 1. So this is negative pala to. This is negative, negative 1. Multiply natin yung 1 to our divisor, which would yield the same. So that's just 4y cubed minus, wait lang, minus 2y minus 3. Okay. So, we're going to subtract that whole term to this one. So, subtracting that, this one will cancel out. This one will be brought down. So, you have 4y squared. And then, you get negative y. Wait lang. Ah, may, may mali ako ng sign. So, negative 1 times negative 2y, you'd get positive to. And then, positive 3 rin to. Ayan. So, this one would be um, negative 8y. Negative 8y. And this one would be negative 8. And this would now become our remainder. So, ito na yung ating remainder. And this one would now become our quotient. So, rewriting this, we have 12y raised to 5 minus 8y raised to 4 minus 10y raised to 3 minus y squared minus 5. And our divisor is 4y raised to 3 minus 2y minus 3. And this should be equal to our quotient, which is 3y raised to 2 minus 2y minus 1. Plus our remainder, which is 4y raised to 2 minus 
y minus 8 divided by r divisor. So our divisor is 4y raised to 3 minus 2y minus 3. So okay, that's our final answer for this one. So was everyone able to follow the computation? Your synthetic division is limited only when the divisor is of the form x plus or minus r. So, yun yung limitation niya. When you're doing long division, kasi it doesn't matter what your divisor is. Is um multinomial ba siya? Is it a polynomial? So, it doesn't matter. You could apply your long division. Uh, but your synthetic division has a limit your divisor should be in this pattern. So, x plus minus r. So, in steps natin on, on doing your synthetic division. So, sabayan natin ang example. In our example, you are going to divide 3x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 5. Divided by x plus 2. So, first natin, first step, arrange the terms of the dividend in descending powers of the variable. So, yeah, arrange natin siya. Naka-arrange naman na siya according to its degree or the power ng ating variable. Letter B, write the numerical coefficients of each term of the dividend in a row, indicating the coefficients of power. Replace the missing power with a zero coefficient. In our example, wala tayong missing coefficient. Na-cover naman natin sa lahat. So, you have your x raised to 3 here. x raised to 2. x. And then, you have your c as your constant. Tapos, ano yung sabi? Letter c. Replace the device or x minus r by r. So, kapag x minus r, magiging positive na yung r natin. If our divisor is x plus 3, or x plus r rather, we're going to replace it by negative r. In our example, this is positive. So, our divisor will become negative 2. Instead of positive 2, it will become negative 2. Okay? Step D, we're going to multiply the coefficient of the largest power of x written on the third row. So, yung coefficient of the largest power by the constant divisor. And then, we're going to place the product beneath the coefficient of the second largest power and add it to, to the coefficient. Tapos, magpa-pattern lang yan. By the way, this one, itong row na to, galing lang siya dito. So, ang ating um, numerical coefficients. So, you have 3, you have negative 1, you have negative 8, tapos you have your constant of positive 5. What we're going to do is, we're just going to multiply 3 to negative 2 and write it down here. So, 3 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. Tapos, i-add natin to. So, negative 1 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 7. Right? Tapos, we're going to do the same. You have negative 7 times negative 2. So, that's equal to positive 14. And then, we're going to add this again. Negative 8 plus 14, you'd get positive 6. And then, positive 6 times negative 2 would be equal to negative 12. Tapos, add natin to 5 plus negative 12, you'd get negative 7. And negative 7 would now be our remainder. This one would now be our quotient. So, you could express our quotient as 3 times x squared minus 7 times x plus 6. Your remainder now would be negative 7. So, we could write it in this manner. Ito na ang ating Sagot. Okay. 
I think that's it for for today's uh, lecture. Para makapag-dinner na din tayo. Any questions? Clarifications?